Hi, my name is Ross Searle from, and I'm from Turn Landscapes. Today I'd like to talk about a piece of software we've developed in Turn called the Soil Data Federator. So when we say soil data, what are we actually talking about? Um, there's raster data, there's polygon data that used to make maps, but today uh, when we talk about soil data, we're talking about soil information that's collected at a specific location. So obviously we have locational, we record locational data, horizon depths, dates of observations, landscape properties like slope and drainage, and profile data um, being morphological data, things such as colour, rockiness, through to laboratory data, things like pH and clay percentage. Uh, some history first. Um, so in Australia, we all know in the times of COVID, uh, all the states do their own thing typically, and it's no different when it comes to soils information. Throughout history, uh, the state agencies have been the collectors and custodians of most of the soil data within Australia. There's also universities that collect data, um, private companies that collect data as well. But the majority at the moment comes from these state agencies. And they've all got different database systems, different data structures, different ways of delivering data um, to, to the general public, all to meet their own specific purposes. But this makes it challenging to bring together any national sort of picture of soil information. Luckily, we have had standards about how we describe that data. Um, and this is these standards um, that the community, soils community has developed have been really useful um, in this work. Our colleague, uh, Paul Box uh, from CSIRO has described the ways that um, the paradigm is by which we can bring data together from point to point, or as he terms it, anarchic, uh, where each individual wants some data, they go to all the individual suppliers and they get the data and they massage it themselves. Uh, through to centralised, such as the BOM collecting weather data. Um, they own all the sensors, they maintain the sensors and they suck all that data into their centralised database. Very efficient, very uh, accurate way of doing data management, but not always uh, possible. Through to the brokered, slash federated approaches where you have disparate data sources, um, they go through some sort of transformation and get delivered to the user in a standardised format. So in 2014, um, with the Soil Landscape Grid version one, we had to put together all the observed soil data we could. So we thought we'd go with the anarchic approach. Um, that involved me, uh, essentially, approaching each state agency, getting their database uh, dumps, transforming all that data, QAing that data, tidying up that data, and sucking it into our own um, specialised tailored database for our purpose. Um, you can see here from the diagrams, um, before this work, the, the biggest uh, conglomeration of national data was the NatSoil database, which CIRO maintained at about uh, 11,000 sites. And after turn one uh, through the National Soil Site Collation, we had established uh, a network of about 240,000 sites. But this approach obviously, and I could give some uh, hints to this, has some limitations. It's a very time consuming process if each individual's, individual is going to do that. It's for a single purpose typically. Uh, it's often hard to use it for other purposes. As soon as you're finished, it's outdated. Soil information is being collected all the time. Um, and this is just a point in time snapshot. And throughout history, these types of collations are easily lost. And we actually have examples of that that's ha happened in Australia. So fortunately in turn, with this longer term funding, we're able to learn from our attempts initially in, in the Soil and Landscape Grid version one and build on those and um, come up with a, a better way of, of accessing soils data. And that's the soils data federator. It's open source, it's written in the R programming language, it uses publicly accessible data, it's always up to date, um, it's easily easy to incorporate new data sources because it's modular, and we have access controls which we can put over the top of data sets um, to restrict access. So basically what happens is um, you send off a request to the Soil Data Federator, it uh, transforms that request into the native uh, request form for a data store, sends that request to the native data store, it then responds in its native format, the Federator translates that into a standardised format 
and returns it back to the user. Um, the data sources which the Soil Data Federator can use are various, including web APIs, databases, spreadsheet, web pages, text files, whatever really. And I'll just jump into a um, live demo now to show how the Soils Data Federator works. So I've just jumped into R here, but uh, pick the programming language of your choice. Those concepts are all the same. And here we'll just specify the data set we're interested in accessing, um, form the URL, which we'll send via the, to the API, uh, then send that request off to the, AP, the Soil data, data Federator API. And we can see down the bottom there, we're just waiting for that to happen. It's happened and we can, there's the data there. I'll uh, query another data set that's available. So the Tasmanian government will do the same stuff. And there's our data from the Tasmanian government as well. We'll just bind those together and draw a map just to show us where the data's come from. And then we can actually go and have a quick look at the data. And there we are. So uh, previous to the soil data federator, that sort of thing may have taken you a week uh, if everything went well um, to contact various organizations, get permissions to access their data, um, and then pull it all together into the various formats and, and harmonize it all. There we did it in about oh, probably 10 seconds if I wasn't talking. But if you're not a geek and, and not that fluent in um, programming languages, we do have a, a web page interface available as well. Um, the Soil Data Federator app, it, it's using the web API, but basically I can uh, pick a data set, um, a property, and hit get the data, and it's gone away, and return that data for me. So basically the same as the programmatic approach, query the data sets, and then I can actually download that data into a CSV file. I should also mention that the um, Soil Data Federator is linked to soil vocabularies um, with de detailed definitions of what all, every soil property means. So this greatly uh, enhances interoperability of the system. So using the Soil Data Federator, we prob uh, have access to approximately 280,000 locations of observed soils data at the moment. And uh, basically, it's over to you. Keeping in mind uh, that obviously the benefits of the Soil Data Federator is that it greatly eases access to data. But one of the limitations is you still actually have to do the hard work of making the data fit for purpose. You've got to do all the QA checking, the data cleansing, the data comes as it is from the various APIs. To use the API, you do have to register at uh, this web page. Just give your email address just so we can um, keep you up to date with what's going on. And obviously, um, none of this would happen without, without our great collaborators across uh, the country. Um, they're listed there. I won't name individuals because I'll, I'll forget some and I don't have time. But the doers uh, involved in this have been Ramnik Singh, Linda Gregory, Peter Wilson, Brendan Malone, and Matt Stenson. Thanks for your time and uh, look forward to talking more about it. Thank you.